In the last video, we discovered that diagonalization was all about taking a linear transformation of space and finding the right basis vectors to describe it. We argued that the best set of vectors were the direction invariant ones, the ones that were only scaled by the transformation. But what if there doesn't exist any such vectors? This video is all about understanding why some matrices are not diagonalizable. First, we need to understand eigenvectors. An eigenvector is a vector such that inputting it into the transformation and multiplying it by some eigenvalue achieves the same effect. To see what I mean, let's look at an example. This is the rotation by 90 degree transformation, which as you might suspect, rotates every point in 3D space around the z-axis 90 degrees. Now it's clear that the yellow z-unit vector is unmoved by this transformation, and so it's an eigenvector since multiplying it by 1 will achieve the same effect. But it does not really look like there are any other vectors that are direction invariant. Now this is where things get a little tricky, because we have to talk about complex numbers. While our transformation is unable to be diagonalized with real number entries, it can be diagonalized when we allow i, the square root of negative 1. In this case, two of our eigenvectors have complex entries, which is why we had a hard time seeing them in our animation. That being said, we can split up each complex eigenvector into its red real part and its imaginary blue part. This way, we can visualize our two complex eigenvectors as four real ones, and we can visually see how rotating the components of the eigenvectors correspond to multiplying them by i and negative i respectively. Notice how both i and negative i equal 1 when you take them to the fourth power, just like how four 90 degree rotations composed together give you the identity transformation. Without getting into the weeds of it, rotation is diagonalizable because there is a complex number that acts like 90 degree rotation. But there are matrices where this is just not the case, and the matrix really is undiagonalizable. Take this seemingly innocent example of a transformation that stretches points in the x and y direction, as well as skew them together a bit. Just like rotation, it doesn't affect any points along the z-axis, but unlike rotation, no matter how many times you apply this matrix, you never end back where you start. For this transformation, there is no set of three basis vectors, real or complex, that are scaled by this transformation. No matter what you choose, you're always going to have them changing direction. Now here is where things get quite tricky. See, linear transformations have these equations attached to them, called invariant factors. And in the case of a diagonalizable matrix, the invariant factors are exactly the equations of the eigenvectors, but they don't have to be. In our undiagonalizable example, we have only two eigenvectors, as well as a more complicated equation that describes the invariance in the transformation. This means that our second eigenvector also satisfies this equation. We can even visually see that this is true. If we take our eigenvector and apply our transformation twice to it, then subtract 4 of our eigenvector applied a single time, our result is exactly minus 4 of our original eigenvector. This obviously is not as easily visualized as just scaling by an eigenvalue, but it captures the invariance of the transformation. In fact, we saw that the same transformation can be described by two different matrices, and also that two different transformations can have the same eigenvectors and values. The thing that uniquely determines your transformation is its invariant factors, so the invariant factors really do capture all the information about your linear transformation. Now, invariant factors are incredibly complicated, and there's still so many great questions to ask and answer. If you want more videos like this, make sure to subscribe. Thank you!